Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. Today we are here to talk about communication systems. Right now I am trying to communicate with you and there is some medium in between which is facilitating this communication process. So in this particular chapter you will be able to list all the elements of a long distance communication system, understand and explain the terms analog and digital signals and you will be able to explain the bandwidths of the signals. Let us start with our chapter. Communication means to transmit and receive information from one individual or one place to another individual or to the other place. So right now sitting in the studio I am communicating with you all which means whatever I am saying that is reaching you and that is possible via a whole lot of communication mechanism. Over here we can have the transfer of information from one to one that is a point to point communication, one to many that means a broadcast communication where one person communicates with a large number of people or else many to many. For example, a telephone conference or a chat room where a large number of people communicate with each other. And based upon the type of communication, we choose one or the other. Let us have a look at a model communication system. In a given model communication system, initially to begin with, we have this signal source. So the information from the signal source is passed on to the sensor transducer. From the sensor transducer, the transmitter picks up the signal and transmits it via the help of a medium to the receiver. The receiver on the other hand then pass on that information to the actuator transducer and it is received at the other end. The information which is being sent is in the form of electric signals which are spread over a range of frequencies which are called the signal bandwidth. So whenever you look at a model communication system, all these components are present in a model communication system. The essential components of a communication system, one after the other. So to begin with a source of signal, sensor transducer, right? When we talk about sensor transducer, it is basically a device which is going to convert one form of energy to the other form of energy. So whatever is the source of signal with the help of sensor transducer, the energy is being converted from one form to the other. So maybe a sound signal or a video signal is converted from that form to the electrical form. And then it is passed on to the transmitter which is ready to launch the signal which is carrying the information. Then there is a medium in between or a channel to guide and carry the signal over long distances. Once the signal manages to reach the other end where we want to send the signal, a signal receiver and an actuator transducer intercepts the signal and retrieves the information. And that's how the information reaches the other end. For example, right now sitting in front of you, I am producing a signal which is received by the sensor transducer and is transmitted via the transmitter. Right now I am communicating with you via a wireless mode of communication. So these signals are transmitted via space and then they are received at your end by the signal receiver and the actuator transducer which intercepts the signal and retrieves the information for you. So my audio and video signal manages to reach to you and the communication becomes possible. Let us look at the different types of signals which are being used for the communication process. So whenever we want to communicate information, it involves the use of the signals. The signals are classified on the basis of their origin and nature. So to classify them, let us have a look. We have continuous or analog signal, discrete or digital signal. These are one kinds of signals. Then we have other kind of signals also like 
coded and uncoded signals, periodic and aperiodic signals. When we say periodic signals, it simply means signals which are going to repeat itself. Aperiodic are not going to be repetitive signals, signals in the form of energy and power signals also and there are deterministic and random signals also. But right now our focus is primarily on continuous that is analog signals and discrete or digital signals. We will talk into details of these two kinds of signals that is continuous and discrete signals. Let us have a look at analog signal. When we say analog signal, it is a continuous signal which takes any value within a range of amplitude at any instant of time. You can have a look at the figure over here. So, this sine wave which is shown over here or this triangular wave pattern which is shown over here is a continuous signal. So, we can see that a whole range of amplitude is taken at different instant of time. In an analog signal, the signal varies sinusoidally or continuously with time in the form of a sine or a triangular waveform. Whenever we deal with analog signals, these analog signals which work in analog systems are much less expensive than the digital systems. The modulation part is much easier in the analog systems. Therefore, these analog signals are used in a number of communication modes. Let us talk about digital signal now. When we say digital signal, it is a kind of signal which takes discrete values, right? So, what happens is that it takes values in the form of 0 and 1. Looking at this signal, you can clearly see sometimes the signal takes the value 0 and for other time duration, the signal takes the value 1. So, going into details of a digital signal, a digital signal always varies in steps and typically it has two widely separated values of 0 and 1. This 0 and 1 are called bits. Digital signals are immune to noise and the signals are primarily used for computers. Primarily the computer network which works is based on digital signals. When we talk about bandwidth of the signal, the bandwidth refers to the frequency range in which the signal varies. The analog bandwidth is defined as the range of spectrum which each of the signal occupies and it is expressed in terms of hertz. When we deal with digital signals, we talk about digital bandwidth. The quantity of information contained in the digital signal is measured by digital bandwidth and it is expressed in bits per second. Right now, these terms are very common to us, the data being given in the form of Mbps, Gbps. So, Mbps is megabits per second, Gbps is gigabits per second. Let us have some common bandwidths of the signals which we normally see. So, when you are plucking a guitar, you are in the frequency range of around 82 to 880 hertz and the bandwidth in kilohertz is of the order of 0.8 kilohertz. For a violin, it is around 196 to 2794 hertz, so that is close to 2.6 kilohertz. The normal sound which we produce lies in the range of 250 to 5000 hertz, so the bandwidth in kilohertz is of the order of 4 kilohertz. The telephone signals which are being generated, they are in the range 200 to 3200 hertz. So, we work in a bandwidth of 3 kilohertz. These are some of the common bandwidths. Now, in this particular part, what we have understood is the various elements which are used in a long distance communication system. We talked about different types of signals and especially details of analog and digital signals and we discussed about the bandwidth of the analog signals which are commonly used and some of the digital signals. Thank you learners.